All right, guys, we are finally back with your top eight set here at the yet here at the Game Cafe midseason showdown. Excuse me. Uh, sorry for the break. Uh, T.O. decided to give the players some time to eat. So for this top eight set, we have Josh DiNapoli versus Ricky Green. Uh, we've already seen both of these players on stream. We saw Josh in the last Swiss round being round five. And we saw Ricky early on in the day in round two. So for those teams, those teams again, if you were, could not remember, Josh is running a team of Cartana, Solomon's Portigon 2, Tapu Lele, Gilith, and Arcanine. Ricky is running a team of Tapu Lele, Metagross, Arcanine, Celestila, Muck, and Salamence. So, Whitney, what do you think of this matchup looking at it on paper right now? Um. I'm not seeing the Mons anywhere, sorry. All right. Um, all right. So, there we go. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, once again, those teams are... Josh is going to be on your stream. Yes, he is car running Cartana, Salamence, Portagon 2, Tapu Lele, Gigalith, and Arcanine. Ricky going to be running Celestila, Salamence, Tapu Lele, Arcanine, Muck, and Metagross. And we saw earlier that that Metagross is actually an Assault Vest Metagross. So, could be interesting and, and see how it deals with... Uh, the Salamence and Arcanine, which their main ways of dealing with that are Flamethrower, but their damage output against it will be mitigated by that Assault Vest. And of course, they cannot Intimidate thanks to the Clear Body. So Metagross potentially being a very important Pokemon here for Ricky. Yeah, I definitely agree. Um, looking at Team Preview, you know, both of these teams have Double Intimidate. Um, I imagine both of those Arcanines probably have Snarl. Um, and uh, Metagross, just its typing is really good in this matchup. You know, it resists uh, Kartana's stabs. It resists Tapu Lele's stabs. It resists uh, Gigalith's stab attacks. Um, gets hit super effectively by some of their coverage moves that they could be running. Um, as well as the flamethrowers from Salamence and uh, Arcanine. But like you said, since it's got that assault vest, um, it's not going to take too much damage. And it's able to hit... Uh, is it a Josh on the bottom here? Yeah, Josh is on the Okay, bottom. yeah, it's able to hit a lot of Josh's Pokemon for super effective damage as well. Um, so I would not be surprised to see Metagross uh, in this game. But again, um, Celestelia could do a lot of the same things, um, you know, with that Heavy Slam firing off a massively 120 base power attack. Um, so both players opting to lead with Arcanine here, uh, bringing that Intimidate support. Yeah, we see that dual Arcanine lead, but Josh's Arcanine will be paired with that Kartana while Ricky decides to lead his next to his Tapu Lele. And Tapu Lele actually revealing, revealing its Psychic, so you're going to boost that Special Defense. Not really going to be all that important right now, though, as there is a Kartana sitting out on the field. However, yeah, so... If Ricky's top of Lele has trained anything like Staven's top of Lele, we know that top that Cartana cannot Oko that even at minus one. Yeah, so you know, that Arcanine is threatening Cartana a lot. Um and Tapu Lele is gonna be able to deal decent damage, um, even on a resisted hit, just because of Cartana's special defense being so low. Um Interesting. So Josh decides we're gonna see Salomon switching for Cartana. Usually you don't see Salamence coming in on top of Lele, however, probably anticipating a fire move. And we do see that flamethrower in Salamence, so good switch right there. Just preserving that Kartana for the later game. And we see a Snarl come out from Arcanine. Gonna lower the special attacks of both of these Pokemon. And Yeah, so Tapu Lele, not too concerned with uh, the uh, Intimidates that it's received, but that Snarl definitely matters and uh, was crucial in making sure Salamence survived that Psychic, so... A good play by Josh there, making sure to lower the damage output there. But uh, that Solomon's has taken a lot of damage here, and uh, the Intimidates so far have been kind of worthless. Yeah. So, but of course, remember that Solomon's does carry the Hydro Pump, so it can be threatening some very good damage onto Ricky's Arcanine here. 
if he so chooses to go for it. We do see the Hydro Pump on the Arcanine. It will connect. Not going to be enough to pick up the Knockout, bringing it to roughly 25%. And it's going to prop that Super Citrus Berry. Actually, no, just a Citrus Berry. Just a regular Citrus Berry. And Arcanine goes for Burn Up. Um, onto Arcanine on Ricky's side. So Arcanine burning itself out. Salomon's actually avoiding the Snarl. Yeah, so Salomon's avoids the Snarl, but if uh, this Tapu Lele goes for like a Dazzling Gleam, it's really not going to matter, because uh, that Salomon's is going to go down anyways. There is the Dazzling Gleam, and because of that burn up, Arcanine actually takes neutral damage from that Dazzling Gleam, so... Right, so it loses its resistance to uh, Fairy, which is a big deal. Um, however, with Kartana coming back on the field... Um, no longer at minus one attack. It's probably going to be able to do enough damage to this Tapu Lele to get a KO. Um, or it but it'll still pay up the Arcanine and get it it'll... just take a boost. Yeah, it could pick off that Arcanine too to pick up a boost, um, which it might want to do since Flamethrower obviously is still going to be threatening it, even if uh, that Arcanine is at minus one. Mm -hmm. So interesting to see who Kartana will target down here. We actually get an Arcanine switch out into Celesteela. So if that slot was targeted with say, a Sacred Sword, we'll still be doing decent damage. But we yeah, so they protect, afraid of that Smart Strike. And Kartana goes with a Night Slash, actually. So maybe trying... There isn't anything on Ricky's team that can be hit super effectively by that. So just clearly trying to... Just not really worried about what switch is in there. Maybe hoping to potentially get a crit on whatever switched in. Yeah, so that's a really good switch in for Celestelia, um, because after Arcanine has used Burn Up, it no longer has a fire type. So uh, non-fire type Pokemon cannot use Burn Up, meaning it, it can't use its fire type attack again. Um, so it's a really safe switch in since Celestelia is going to resist the uh, Night Slash, or not not the Night Slash, but uh, the Smart Strike or Leaf Blade that uh, Kartana could potentially do. So it's in a really strong position against these two Pokemon right now. Um, and it also gives the uh, option to bring Arcanine back in for another Intimidate. Instead, he goes for Metagross, so he's got two Steel-types out here. Um, gonna resist basically any attack these Pokémon can throw at him. Yeah, not really doing any damage with that Smart Strike. And Arcanine going for... I totally missed what happened. Yeah, it it just completely lagged out on my end too. So well, we All saw right. Celestilo and we saw a roar from Arcanine. Okay, so seeds went up, roar uh, came, and uh, guys connection trouble on their end. Okay, uh, that little timeout. But interesting play for the roar on Arcanine, not wanting that Celestilo on the field whatsoever. Maybe feeling that Kartana could have been potentially threatened by a flamethrower, but I feel if it had flamethrower, it would have gone for it there, so maybe signifying that it does not have it. Kartana Night Slash on a Metagross. Well, that Night Slash only does about 50%, so that Metagross um, yeah, also about, probably got some defensive training as well. Yeah, doing about 40% there, and that Snarl not going to do a lot of damage there at all, but will weaken the Psychic onto that Artana, we actually see a double up in that slot with a Zen Headbutt, too. So not really doing much damage at all to the Cartana. So Cartana typically not a Pokemon that usually can take a double up like that. However, thanks to that Snarl from Arcanine, was able to take the combination of Psychic and Zen Headbutt. Yeah, and that's going to be important because um, those are two terrain-boosted attacks right there as well. Um, and naturally, Cartana's got... Um, pretty decent defensive stats and it does have the advantage of resisting all the attacks that Tapu Lele and Metagross generally carry. Um, so that certainly helps. Yeah. Also helping here that that Psychic terrain has gone down. So those attacks, from those and headbutts and Psychics will be doing less damage now than they previously were. So you can see Tapu Lele switch out into Arcanine. Maybe trying to make sure that this Metagross can take one more Night Slash, if that is what Josh tries to go for. Of course, that Intimidate not really doing much against Arcanine, because it is special. But we do see a Night Slash here on the Metagross. With the Intimidate drop, it is not able to pick up the KO. However, Snarl from Arcanine will pick it up. And Snarl finishes it off. 
Um, so that's a big loss. Um, we don't know everything that Josh has in the back, but Metagross definitely is good against everything he has except for um, Arcanine and Celestelia, especially since that Salamence is already has already been KO'd. Um, so yeah, Arcanine getting a little bit of health back here with the Leech Seed can actually be really important here in the next couple turns because if it continues to get that health back, Kartana is going to be in a range which it cannot knock it out. So it'll be interesting to see what plays out with that. And of course, with that minus one now, Kartana cannot oak, get a one hit knockout onto this Tapu Lele. So if Tapu Lele so chooses to do, it can pick up a KO on Arcanine with a Psychic. If it is able to say, if it even at minus one potentially. So good position here for Ricky. We see Kartana go for the Sacred Sword. No protect from his Arcanine. At minus one is not able to pick up the KO. We see Flamethrower. Gonna yeah, and this Flamethrower coming out is going to easily f pick up the KO on Kartana. So this brings Josh down to two Pokemon. Um, the Snarl from Arcanine does not pick up the KO on Ricky's Arcanine. Going to hang on with barely any HP. But most importantly, maybe would allow this Arcanine to live the Psychic. Will it be able enough? Yes, it is. 7 HP. 7 HP remaining. And uh, Arcanine surviving that Snarl is really important because... um. It gives Ricky the opportunity to switch out either one of these Pokemon to reset that special attack drop as well. Be interesting to see what we have not seen this po last Pokemon for Josh. And it's actually the Porygon 2. So interesting that that is the Pokemon that he chose for his last slot. We see the attack boost. However, don't really know how much Porygon, Porygon 2 can deal with this Arcanine. However, there is a Celesteela in the back so we see morning sun as well come out from ricky's arcanine so making sure porygon 2 will not pick up a ko this turn once he gets a critical hit psychic from tapu lele on the porygon 2 at minus one picking up a critical oh hit. but a critical hit to deal just over 50 percent porygon 2 is gonna set up the trick room so wouldn't be seeing how much that psychic did with the critical hit uh wouldn't be surprised if Arc just Basically, still does almost nothing. Porygon 2 showing off with the bulk. So I wouldn't be surprised if Arcanine goes for like a Will-O-Wisp into the slot to just whittle it down. We see Tri-Attack, actually. We actually have a Taunt from Tapu Lele. So interesting tech move there for Tapu Lele. So we actually see a Snarl come out from Arcanine. So just weakening this Porygon 2's damage output. So Yeah, so that Taunt's really important because it's going to prevent this Porygon from doing uh, any recover shenanigans. As well as preventing, you know, the potential for toxic or anything else to really um, make it hard for Porygon to come back and three v one this game. Dry attack, not picking up the KO on Arcanine thanks to that Snarl drop. And we do see a Will o' Wisp from this Arcanine, so getting its full move set here. So good information for Josh taking next turn, getting the knowing that that Arcanine does not actually have protect on its move set. So, All right. So you got to think maybe. Uh, maybe Ricky could have played a little bit differently. Um, you know, maybe sacrificing Arcanine so you don't reveal Morning Sun, um, just so you uh, maintain some of that information for game two and potentially three. But uh, I can't fault the guy for doing like the most optimal play to limit any chance for RNG to come in and end the game for him. So try attacking and pick up a Paralysis on a Celesteela. However, not going to matter all too much as Tapu Lele. He's able to pick up this KO. And Ricky Green going to take game one, 3 0 against Josh DiNapoli. So, after that game, Whitney, what do you think Josh needs to do? We saw Josh bring back his last set against Staven after going 0 1. So, what adjustments does he have to make here to potentially get that comeback once again? So, I think he's got the right idea with uh, trying to bring that trick room mode because Ricky doesn't have the anti-trick room stuff quite as much as um, his opponent in round five did. So I think bringing the Porygon, um, but the problem is that his Gigalith is just threatened by those steel types so much. Um, so I really think Arcanine, you know, maybe being able to get some burns off on the opposing Metagross uh, would be really helpful as well, since you can't intimidate the dang thing. Mm -hmm. All right, we are back in team preview, and these teams are 
Josh is going to be on your left. His team is Cartana, Solomon's, Tapu Lele, Porygon 2, Gigalith, and Arcanine. And Ricky is going to be running that Celestila, Salomon's, Muck, Tapu Lele, and Metagross. So, that we didn't see that Metagross do all that much work. However, Josh put so much effort into KOing it that it just allowed Ricky's other Pokemon to get off good ship damage and set and just pick up some easy knockouts along the way. So, interesting to see if he does bring Metagross this time and maybe tries to protect it a little bit better so it can be the one picking up the knockouts this time. Because as, we, as we've said before, Metagross has a lot of Pokemon on Josh's side. But, so Josh, knowing that, probably going to have to preserve... Put, probably going to may or may not put more into KOing his partners be KOing Metagross' partners and just leaving it around, but of course that could be extremely dangerous. We're gonna jump in the game now. And we see Tapu Lele Cartana from Josh. And we get Tapu Lele Metagross from Ricky. So Psychic Terrain is gonna go up. We see it actually come from Ricky's Tapu Lele first. So possibly signifying it is the faster between the two. And we see that Psychic Seed boosting is special defense and that cartana here is in a very good spot if it is indeed able to pick up a knockout on the top of the lily with the smart strike as metagross is not threatening threatening it with a lot of damage and top of lily as we have seen psychic is still going to do a good amount of damage to it but with that assault vest cartana will be able to at least take at least one so be interesting wouldn't be surprised here if ricky tries to get that arcanine in to get an intimidate off onto that slot yeah, and uh, Josh's Tapu Lele, of course, in a unsafe position against the opposing Metagross. So not surprised to see him switching out there. Um, you know, that Intimidate's not going to do anything to slow down Metagross, but it does at least resist the uh, potential attacks here. You protect from Tapu Lele. Josh making a nice read, going for the Night Slash on a Metagross. It's going to do about 35-40%. We see Zen Headbutt on the Arcanine. Thanks to the Psychic Terrain, not able to do a lot of damage, but not able to pick up a knockout. And that Citrus Berry brings Arcanine back to around half HP. Yeah, so I really like that play on Ricky's end there. Going for the Zen Headbutt instead of the uh, Meteor Mash. Um, knowing that Tapu Lele is really threatened by Metagross, and so uh, feeling like he's got a better shot of doing some good damage to whatever switch is in there. Um, so I think that's a good read and a good safe play protecting Tapu Lele to, uh, you know, prevent it from being KO'd by Cartana. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if Metagross gets doubled up into with uh, like a Snarl and a... Night Slash. Night Slash. That would have been oh. enough to KO. Um, Ricky, recognizing that that could happen, goes ahead and pulls it out, uh, brings in his Arcanine, gets an Intimidate off on Cartana, which is really important. Uh, we see that Smart Strike on the top of the Lele. How much is this going to do? So going to do good damage, even at minus one. We see a double into the top of the... Oh, never mind. We see that burn up into Arcanine. So not going to be double targeting that top of the Lele. And because of that... No, because of the no double up, Tapu Lele is able to KO the Arcanine with the Psychic. So now Arcanine is out on the field and is heavily threatening this Cartana. However, Josh getting his own Tapu Lele back out on the field to threaten this Arcanine with the Psychic. Yeah, so I think that's important for Josh there because um, obviously Arcanine's Flamethrower into Cartana is going to deal a ton of damage. Um, we didn't see if Cartana was... Uh, Focus Sash because it took chip damage, but uh, based on the we Psychic... Saw, we saw in round 5 that it does not Focus Sash. Okay, right. So, um, the Flamethrower, even with an Assault Vest, is going to be a clean one-hit KO, um, given that four times weakness. And Cartana, knowing that, gets itself out of there in favor of the Salamence, so getting the Intimidate off onto both of these special attack and Pokemon, so I'm not really going to do all that much, but Arcanine is threatened by a Hydro Pump from Salamence if it is able to get one off. Flamethrower into Salamence. And we see a Psychic. And this is double into Cartana. 
slot. Yes, it is, and Salomon goes down. Very good read there by Ricky. It's a you know, double. interesting to not see a protect there uh, on the uh, Tapu Lele slot, given that uh, it was in range for another smart strike. But um, I guess Ricky deciding that if he loses his Tapu Lele in a trade, Tapu Lele for Kartana, that it's an advan advantageous trade-off for him. Um, and going ahead and doubling into that slot. Yeah, this Shattered that. Psyche, KOing, KOing Arcanine, um, it's just too bad he couldn't do it before Salamence got KO'd. Yeah, definitely think Ricky would... Ricky got more than more on that turn than I think he was anticipating, because he gets to keep his... I think... He gets to keep the top of the way, which I think he was definitely not expecting to. Like he said, I think he was just playing for that trade of Cartana for top of the we could sell a Steela in now, and now that Salamence going down is very important because that Salamence cannot learn to intimidate or a fire move onto the Celesteela. And Celesteela may be able to pick up a one-hit KO here with Heavy Slam onto the, onto the top of Lele. And because top of Lele on Ricky's side cannot pick the last turn, it is able to do it this turn and prevent Kartana from attacking it. But Kartana reading into that and going for a Sacred Sword not really doing all that much damage onto it, but we see a taunt from top of the lake onto the Celesteela, not wanting to go for any Leech Seeds, which it does go for instead of the Heavy Slam. So a good turn there from Josh. Yeah, that's a really good turn for Josh. Um, preventing that Celestelia from setting up Leech Seeds or from being able to set up a substitute to try and stall out the uh, Kartana. Um, I think that taunt was really important, and now he's free. Um, you know, do I think he's going to switch out Metagross, um, should I attack it with the Night Slash, or do I go for the Smart Strike onto this Tapu Lele slot? Oh, do the Night Slash and the Tapu Lele, not the Smart Strike, and because of that, it does not pick up the KO, so Fish trying to catch that Metagross on the switch in. However, Ricky just keeps that in, goes for a Dazzling Gleam, doing a little bit of shit damage to the Kartana. We also see the Heavy Slam there from Celestila on the top of Lele, however, it protected and took no damage, so I like the play there from Josh, knowing that if he was able to get that damage off on the Metagross, he would, need, he would be in an extremely good position for Kartana to sweep. And it still is in a good position to sweep, because that top of Lele has taken so much damage, just a, flick, a gust of wind will KO that and allow top, Kartana to get a beast boost, but we're just going to see top of Lele protect. And we see Josh reading into that again, going for a Sacred Sword on a Celesteela. And the Moonblast just trying to KO. Well, it's not going to be enough, but brings it down to about, with a critical hit, brings it down to about 25%. And we see the yeah. Heavy system. Is this going to KO? Yes, it is. Yeah, so that KO is really important, because now uh, Celesteela is going to pick up that Beast Boost, going to get increased special defense which won't help it out against Kartana um so I'll steal the taunt whereas also if it does carry that substitute we'll be able to just set that up right now Kartana of course not gonna be able to KO that Celestilo however it can fire off a Night Slash in the top of Lele slot because it will pick up the KO there and if Metagross tries to switch in it will potentially go down to that as well so, yeah, so there's really no reason for him to not Night Slash that Tapu Lele slot. Um, we actually see the Smart Strike, though. So, potentially a very risky play if that Metagross did indeed try to switch in. However, did not Tapu Lele will go down, and we get a attack boost on Kartana. So, I believe it is up to plus one. Yeah, it is up to plus one, because it switched out earlier. Celestia will set up a substitute. So, good play there from... Ricky to get that sub up and just force two attacks from Kartana into that slot if it wants to KO. Metagross coming in here, however, will not be able to protect from this oncoming Night Slash thanks to that because it is holding to an Assault Vest. And we do see the Night Slash from Metagross. How much is it going to do? Metagross goes down. Oh, it oh Metagross survives. Um, and that's going to be really important because now Kartana is going to be forced to take um, yeah, three heavy a slams from Celestelia. A critical hit earthquake on a Kartana. Celestelia heavy slam will 
not I do not believe that will KO the next turn if it gets the same damage roll as it did this turn. So interesting to see what will happen here. Another thing though, could, we could see a bullet punch from Metagross just putting that in range of Heavy Slam. So very good position here for Ricky and a clutch survival by that Metagross. Can't have more than at least five hit points there. We do see bullet punch bring Cortana down to the red. Smart strike coming out from Cortana. We can get out the Metagross. And Celesteela here will just clean up the game with Heavy Slam. Yeah, so that survival there on Metagross was key to winning that game. Um, you know, had had it not survived, Cartana would have not had to uh, take damage from that Earthquake. Uh, and maybe would have been able to survive the two Heavy Slams that it needed to survive. Um, to get enough damage off on the opposing Celestelia. Um, unfortunately, Metagross's defenses are just too high, and uh, he wasn't quite able to break through it. Yeah, with, that, with Metagross being able to survive from that range, we saw how bulky that Kartana is, that lack of attack investment, really just showing in that set. And because, of that, because of the little attack it probably has, it wasn't able to pick up that KO and just let Ricky take the win here. So, But very well played by Ricky. Managing his board is always in a very good spot on the board. And if there was ever a slight chance in which his Pokemon were threatened, he always made the correct switch or protect to make sure that Pokemon took no damage that turn. All right, and so uh, we're going to be jumping into top four in just a bit. Um, we'll be back in a couple minutes. <laughs> 